Welcome, everybody. As you know, this is uh, a, a sem seminar that is uh, really dedicated to science, to the joy of science. The Presidential Lectures series has, uh, has that really aim to, uh, to really, really touch us on the, in a way that maybe other dedicated seminars does not. It should touch uh, us in a way that we will uh, be more interested and then see a little bit uh, beyond the science that we work with every day. And um, as a chemist, which also our lecturer today is a chemist, we, uh, we can see this, uh, of course, also as a, as a seminar that will uh, be catalyzing our inter, uh, intersection between disciplines. This is what uh, actually OIS is all about. It's about to really choose your uh, way that you want to look at science and, uh, and technology, of course and then uh, be inspired and, ca and uh, to, really, to really go beyond and, and, and explore the intersection in between the disciplines um, to really see how you can put more, even more value into your science and how you can actually also be inspired to solve uh, uh, larger complex questions that, are, that need more than one scientific approach. So really, uh, there is one more thing about this um, presidential lecture, and that is also to inspire the ones that are not really scientists, and to see, to really kind of follow an, a lecture that uh, be also to get get more interest in the science and spread that the importance of science in uh, in uh, the society. I don't know if we have any anybody in here that is not a scientist, but if so, you're also mostly welcome. And this presidential lecture, we are so very happy today uh, to have a, a, a very distinguished professor, Makoto Fujita, and uh, you, we are uh, from Tokyo University. And uh, to get a more uh, precise presentation, Paula, please take the scene. It's my honor to introduce Professor Fujita. Uh, Professor Fujita introduced the concept of metal directed self assembly to supramolecular chemistry, creating building blocks from transition metal group and organic molecules that self assemble into large, stable, cyclic, and three dimensional structures. Is a university distinguished professor at the School of Engineering at the University of Tokyo. He has received numerous awards and honors for his innovative research, including the 2018 World Prize in Chemistry and the 2019 Imperial Prize. He was named a Clarivate Citation Laureate in 2020. Molecular self-assembly based on coordination chemistry has made an explosive impact in the recent year. Today, this lecture will explore this compelling field and I invite Fujita's current research. Thank you for listening. Okay, 
so I will use this microphone sound. Now I hope it's clear. I'm a bit scared for what will be submitted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are, uh, so if you are asked to answer, uh, then my lecture is explained for two hours. It is late, but you are <laughs> excellent. Okay. Let me uh, switch to my presentation. Okay, so uh, my lecture is based on chemistry. And uh, uh, the key word is uh, self-assembly and uh, coordination chemistry. Self-assembly, the similar word is uh, self-organization. Anyway, uh, the, we have already experienced uh, the, uh, the phenomena of self-organization. Even the relationship between people uh, becomes more uh, so spontaneously they are organized. And uh, the flow of money can be also uh, so spontaneously stabilized. Even the structure of the uh, uh, cosmic will be uh, spontaneously stabilized. So the mechanism of self-assembly or uh, mechanism of self-organization work everywhere, everywhere. And uh, we are discussing only the self-assembly uh, of the molecular work, a small molecular the uh, random molecules will be spontaneously organized. And uh, in our uh, study, uh, this phenomena is uh, induced by the uh, coordination on the metal vegan interaction. Okay? So uh, in our cell assembly system, we are using transition metal by adding metal ions to the solution of very simple bridging organic components. And uh, all the species try to find their right pathway leading to the most stable structure. In this case, this spherical large framework is spontaneously formed. Uh, from, uh, from this animation, you can understand, you can understand the power and the principle of surfacing based on position. We have been working on this project uh, since the uh, 1990. So, uh, in this year, we found the uh, formation of a uh, spontaneous formation of a palladium coronal square mark by simply combining the 90 degree coordination block and the linear focal by prism. So uh, we expected the uh, formation of the square framework, but we didn't expect the uh, quantitative formation because uh, okay, the uh, organization could be uh, right this way, this way, this way, coming back to the uh, original phrase is uh, not in a uh, uh, high probability. Normally it gives polynomial polygons. Uh, even one person, we were very happy we could well get this square framework. But uh, beyond surprising, so beyond our expectation, uh, we obtained this compound and quantitative. We are very surprised. So normally the formation of cyclic framework is not an easy task. So connecting the uh, both ends of the regular strand is not an easy task. Uh, Transformation in chemistry. So, but uh, we observed the constant formation and we wondered why. Okay. And uh, we realized that there is a diversity of the metal vegan interactions. Once the uh, components are generated, uh, so components give the uh, ligomas, then uh, they have opportunities to back to the uh, components. And uh, they all the components will enjoy the some dynamic equilibration and they are beating more and more stable fractions and finally it reaches to this so as a result of some dynamic equilibration this framework is formed in a quantitative uh, such a phenomenon or such a concept did not exist uh, only uh, 
And even back to the 80s, uh, we can find some historical works in the literature, such as Soji Katame, the two being uh, the weekly origins. Okay? Uh, he got Nobel Prize in 2016. And uh, uh, Hirikawa Complex, uh, reported by Shomari Ren and the Consul. Okay? However, uh, these uh, earlier examples didn't show any particular functions. So in our case, in our system, we created not only the framework, but also the cavities, which is an excellent platform for further developing the new reactions, new phenomena, new properties. So uh, since then, uh, we have been developing the chemistry of a self-assembly of not only the framework, but also cavities. Okay. Uh, uh, regarding the uh, uh, chemically defined cavities, and uh, all the chemistry is uh, uh, ascribed to the discovery of chromism. So synthetic molecule bind the recognized the chemical species uh, at the beginning, that's just a metal bind. Then the synthetic people tried to synthesize synthetic cavities, so artificial cavities, to bind the uh, molecules in the pocket. Uh, the, of course, the sim uh, phenomenon is uh, similar to the uh, binding of substance by enzyme. But uh, as long as the uh, framework cavity is constructed by covalent synthesis, so common ordinary chemical synthesis, there are limitations so in terms of size and function. Okay. The uh, mechanism of self-assembly removed the limitation. We could easily construct a bunch of bigger cavities, and uh, we could easily extend uh, this concept to the uh, construction of three-dimensional cages. We and others have developed the uh, self-assembled cages and uh, developed new phenomena inside the uh, cage frame. So in recent years, our cage framework is getting bigger and bigger. So, uh, in my lectures, I would like to uh, overview the concept of our chemistry from the origins to the latest advantage. So, first, let me discuss on the chemistry of cages, regular components. So, starting from the square, uh, we have developed many, many three-dimensional coordination architectures with cavities. And depending on the size and the, uh, the shape of the cavities, uh, we could enjoy many, many new chemistries, new reactions, new functions, new properties. And among them, uh, this M6 L4 cage uh, has been showing the remarkable potential so, thanks to the tiny nature of metal palladium centers, the complex is highly water soluble. But uh, in water, uh, it provides efficient hydrophobic pocket, like an enzyme. So, in water, enzyme can also provide highly efficient binding properties. Then, okay? uh, so in the cavity, we could accommodate multiple number of molecules, two or more molecules. Then uh, uh, by making the uh, aggregation of small molecules in the cavities, uh, we could design and develop new reactions, new properties, and new functions. So uh, it has been more than a quarter century. But still, this M6 L4 case is uh, one of the center player in our laboratory. So, uh, we can easily recognize two different molecules in a pairwise selective function. So this is a very important phenomenon of observation to design the new chemical reactions because uh, most of the chemical reactions are bimolecular events between two molecules. We can easily make the close so contact, close approximation of two molecules. This is exactly the same as the, uh, the enzyme is doing. 
uh, we can accommodate even uh, uh, oligomers, peptide oligomers, or oligonucleotides in a uh, uh, sequence selective fashion. Also, the uh, other ways unstable species can be trapped, and unusual uh, reaction could occur in the cavities. Oh, uh, this is the uh, result of the uh, Dilsadar reaction, the summer reaction of four pi electrons and the two, so four plus two cycle addition. Also, upon photo irradiation, uh, we observed the efficient 2 plus 2 photo additions. And surprisingly, these stable aromatic compounds, these stable, which normally do not participate to the ideal solder with a 2 plus 2 photo addition, but uh, these stable aromatic compounds could easily undergo, underwent the ideal solder reaction. So, even the uh, so non activated NAFTA. Can be the substrate. And uh, regarding the anthracene, normally the uh, central benzene ring is the, uh, shows the highest reactivity. But uh, in a cavity, uh, at the uh, pre organization, uh, the reaction site could address to the only the terminal ring. Terminal ring. And uh, we observed quite unusual region selectivity in this, this other reaction. And the, uh, most of the uh, reactions were pre organization and the products were confirmed by X ray result of the occasions. And when the uh, reaction product was less strongly bound to their cavities, then the uh, incoming substrate will kick out their product. Then uh, we observed the efficient catalytic channel. So, yes. Uh, Again, like an enzyme, we can use the cavities as a catalytic site for chemical transformations. So, in one word, well, in summary, so our cavity has been showing the molecular confinement we are still developing. And uh, at the relatively early stage of our chemistry, so back to the 90s, uh, we, uh, yeah, our chemistry was branched into several different directions. So, the yeah, confinement effect is one of the, uh, the directions. So, and uh, uh, not recently, but uh, the uh, early stage, so we could make such new directions. So, this simply means that this field was totally so, quiet, totally quiet, no uh, And uh, every day, every day, we have new discoveries. So, that's the reason why we could easily make a very different direction in our science. Then we just discuss on the uh, molecular entanglement by, uh, based on the uh, coordination self assembly, we can easily construct highly entangled molecular uh, structure. The uh, simplest molecular entanglement was observed in the formation of a two ring catenary. Okay? So one ring is here and another ring is here, so they are interrupting. So at that time, so back to the 90s or 80s, the, uh, so the catenary was used to be a very, very curious molecule. And uh, it was almost their imaginary components of their old chemists. Okay? So, uh, there are two giants, Champions uh, Fudge and the Fraser Stone. So, in the 80s, they created a very clever uh, rational design and synthesis of catenates, to bring catenates. So, uh, uh, yeah, our catenate. Uh, synthesis is almost 10 years behind yeah, these early works. But uh, the uh, principle is totally different. So, uh, totally distinguished from the, uh, these earlier examples. In that, uh, two molecular rings slide into a cavity. 
through a topologically hidden polarism uh, process. I mean that we can make the yeah, separated molecular wings by surface. And by changing the uh, concentration or by changing, modulating the uh, changing the uh, polarity of the sun, then uh, preform two molecular wings slide into it. So it's like a magic behavior. Actually, the, uh, the editor of the nature called named our complex molecular magic. And uh, in the formation of this uh, catenane, okay, the, uh, conceptually, uh, this is the most important. This is the scientific significance. By the metal induced self assembly, the topologically forbidden processes become allowed. Okay. So, for mathematicians, separate things and catenanes are, are not the equivalent. They can never convert from here to here. But the, such a topologically forbidden process becomes allowed, thanks to the reversibility of the metal of the interaction. OK, so the uh, driving force is, so let me back one slide. The driving force is the hydrophobic interaction in water. So then uh, uh, two molecular rings recognize each other. They stabilize each other. Uh, then, uh, uh, very surprisingly, the, uh, everybody believes that catenate is a very difficult target to be synthesized. But uh, our uh, so results demonstrate that the uh, catenate is more stable than the uh, separate things. But uh, nobody noticed that because there were, there were no pathway, no pathway. This process is topologically forbidden. But by removing this topological restriction, then we could easily make more stable cadmium by surface. And uh, uh, so based on this uh, concept, then uh, uh, we have constructed many, many interlocking, interlocked structures. Some of them were synthesized by design. And some of them were obtained just by chance, by action. So uh, even a three-dimensional structure can be developed by this, based on this principle. Let me show you the one interesting uh, example. So the, this period cage uh, is the uh, component of the uh, three-dimensional interlocking molecule. So here you can see two planar uh, pillar ring, uh, uh, two planar ligands are uh, paired with three linear molecules. And, uh, you can make, uh, you can find the uh, flat planar cavities to which we can insert planar molecule. So, and uh, by uh, so extending the lengths of the pillars, we can insert the uh, one or two or three cartridge molecules, so, namely uh, by, uh, by inserting the uh, functional unit into the cavities, uh, we could enjoy the plug-in functionalization of the case. And when the uh, stacking number is uh, more than six, okay, then uh, uh, we used the technique of three-dimensional interlocking. Okay. Here, uh, you can see the one pillar cage. So two triangular ligands are so pillar with three pillar molecules. Then uh, another copy, another copy of itself is interlocking in this way. Still, there are three compartments where planar molecules can be inserted forming the uh, stable, very stable stacking of uh, discrete seven aromatic systems in the uh, acceptor donor, acceptor donor orders. What we did was just mixing all the components. So uh, six pillars and four uh, triangular ligands, three gas molecule, 
and the 12 metal uh, hinges, metal coordination. So just mixing everything, not everything. So, uh, so in principle, we can think of many, 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 so almost infinite number of products. However, only this structure is formed because this is the most stable. So, yeah, again, you can confirm uh, the, you can understand the power and the principle of self. So, recently uh, we are playing with peptide, metal peptide uh, framework uh, is constructed, and uh, we uh, again observed the uh, molecular entanglement. So, one of my colleagues, Tomo, Tomo so, who is uh, now independent PI at the Tokyo Institute of Technology, uh, he used to be a system professor in my group. Uh, he started the uh, 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 self assembly using the uh, so from the uh, peptide short fragments. Okay? So, long peptides. Should show, will show the folding properties into alpha helix or beta Okay. However, the short fragments cannot. So it just other parts show the random confirmation. So yeah, the idea is if the short fragment is linked to the oligomers by metal coordination, then a uh, metal peptide polyomers would show their folding nations. Then uh, uh, the assembly uh, will help their folding process. And uh, by folding the uh, uh, peptide framework, then uh, uh, the, the component becomes really rigid. This is favorable for self assembly. So uh, folding uh, will help the assembly. Then these are two processes help each other. We expect. Then uh, uh, we uh, just mixed this very simple uh, tri peptide uh, ligand with uh, two pyrogen coordination side at the both end and uh, complex with metal ions. Then uh, uh, we observed the uh, very exciting structures. <coughs> Which are beyond our expectation. We uh, obtained double helical, yeah, double helical, so folding structures, and uh, it's circular. And in this case, you can see seven crossing to the original position. And uh, we can see many hydrogen bonding uh, between the two stars. So they are folded. They are folded. And uh, assembled into the uh, torus structure with seven crossing or eight crossing structures. And uh, uh, by increasing the strict demand of the R group, uh, we could easily expand their characteristics. This is nine crossing torus structure, and uh, even uh, the ten crossing torus structure could be obtained. We confirmed the formation of this structure in solution. So when it's crystallized, when it's uh, so crystallized into the solid state, then uh, uh, so some distortion, uh, so because of the distortion in the ring, uh, it was opened to become the troidal double helical complexes. Anyway, uh, we could easily uh, construct it construct a torus knot or a torus beam framework with end crossing topologies. The simplest torus structure is a trifoil knot with three crossing points, which was first synthesized by Jean Pierre Squash in 1980. And since then, the synthetic people tried to expand their structure. But, uh, so, as long as the framework is constructed by only by covalent bonds, then uh, uh, roughly five or six crossing structures are almost a limitation. But we could easily remove 
the uh, limitation. Then uh, uh, by using the uh, self assembly, uh, we succeeded the uh, formation of seven to ten crossing processors. So here are lessons. Uh, the, again, the forbidden ring setting process becomes allowed by metal in this assembly. Also, hidden and tabling nature. Okay. So peptide has yeah we know the uh, okay alpha helix or beta sheet structures are very well known, familiar with everyone. But uh, we believe that entanglement is hidden folding problem. Hidden hidden uh, folding nature which could not be expressed in nature, in proteins, because of the topological restrictions. By removing the uh, topological <coughs> restriction, we could see, we could observe such a hidden folding nature, so entangling nature of short proteins by metal-induced assembly. Okay, so let me discuss of the uh, extension of the discrete framework into the infinite framework. <coughs> so you can understand by simply removing the capping group on the metal centers, then the, this square framework will be extended infinitely into the uh, grid shape structures. Okay? And uh, uh, in fact, in 1994, uh, we reported the self assembly of uh, extended coordination network, square grid uh, network. So, uh, at that time, the uh, chemistry of metal organic framework did not exist. The such term did not exist. Only Richard Robson was a pioneer of the uh, chemistry of extended coordination network. And particularly uh, in their publication in 1988, uh, they clearly proposed the uh, post zeolite or small nucleus. So we are also expecting the uh, porous nature of the chemicals. So, namely, that if uh, you compare these two substances, so uh, this is a discrete, this is an infinite material. The two chemistries are totally different, the solution chemistry and the solid state chemistry. But we notice that the nature of the cavity should be the same. So our original idea was to translate the solution chemistry to the glycine state or solid state chemistry through the cavities. Okay? Solution chemistry and the solid state chemistry will be equivalent through the cavity. This is the, uh, our original idea of why we started the uh, extension of the square framework into the uh, grid sheets. And uh, since our uh, first report, uh, our group published a couple of papers on the uh, metal uh, extended network, coordination network. And uh, after several uh, years, several years later, in 2002, uh, we had an important discovery. So single crystal to single crystal guest exchange in the form of the porous coordination network. Okay, so in the cavities, the uh, organic molecules, uh, typically the solvent uh, accommodated. They are mobile uh, at room te temperature. They can behave like liquid. So, and uh, if the crystal is dipped in another solvent, then the pore solvent, the solvent in the pore, will be completely replaced. So, and uh, uh, this guest exchange occurred in a single crystal to single crystal fashion. So namely, even after the solvent exchange, we could perform the X-ray crystallographic analysis. 
And by simply uh, cooling the temperature, cooling, so lowering the temperature, then the mobile molecules will be freezed in the cavities. So then the, uh, the solvent molecules are observed together with the host grain by x ray. So, so even after gas exchange, we could observe they are exchanged new uh, gas molecules. And uh, we immediately applied this phenomenon for the crystallographic observation of chemical reactions. So namely, the first, the substrate is absorbed into the cavities. Then the reagent will be so, injected, absorbed into the cavity. Then the reaction start, reaction will occur in the cavity. And by carefully controlling the temperatures, we can freeze the reaction at any moment, at any stage. Okay? In some cases, in the most successful case, uh, we could see the pre-organization of the substrate and then the reaction intermediate. And final point. So no, nobody we can monitor the chemical reactions, the chemical reaction by NMR or by other spectroscopic methods. But uh, we could observe the chemical reaction. We could monitor the chemical reaction, not by spectroscopy, but by X-ray crystallography. We could visualize the solution chemistry. And uh, we have published a couple of papers on the X-ray snapshot observation of shoot solution state reaction. And uh, finally, we realized that so we are developing the uh, analytical chemistry. Okay? So we are thinking of the uh, new materials, new functions, new products. We are developing the chemistry from the viewpoint of material science. But finally, uh, we realized we are developing a new analytical chemistry. Okay? So if unknown compound, structurally unknown compound, is absorbed into the crystal, then after the absorption, we can see the molecule. We can determine the molecular structure of unknown compound. Then uh, uh, we, uh, 2013, uh, we reported the crystalline sponge method, which is a new X-ray technique that does not require the crystallization of the target molecules. Okay? So here, here is our, our porous complex. Okay? And uh, here is a liquid sample, or just a sample solution. Okay? You want to see the chemical structure of this unknown compound. And uh, by treating the sample with our crystalline sponge, then uh, the uh, uh, porous complex absorbs, absorbs the gas molecule, target compound from the solution. And by picking up this gas absorbed crystal and subjecting it to the common X ray crystallographic analysis, then we can see the molecule. So, uh, in addition to the original host framework, just absorbed, just penetrated guest molecules can be clearly absorbed. This is a fine example of our crystalline sponge method. So that does not require the crystallization of the samples. So, you don't need to suffer from the uh, crystallization. You don't need to suffer from the uh, nightmare of crystallization. <laughs> so just from the uh, solution, okay, uh, you can easily get the uh, crystal structure. The principle of the method is very simple. So to observe the uh, X-ray scattering, uh, we observe the uh, we need the periodic array, so the order array of the uh, target compound, analytic compound. And uh, everybody believed that 
Crystallization is only the way to make the periodic layer. No, it's not true. If the cavities are ordered, already are ordered, then or if the cavities are already crystallized, then by pouring the sample into the crystallized cavities, then we can make the order So well, this is the principle of our crystal Do all the molecules face the same directions? Ah, uh, so there are many different directions. Ah, the gas molecules. Okay, I will discuss it in the next slide. Okay. Then, uh, okay, uh, the, uh, this is the most uh, potent crystalline uh, sponge that assembles from the uh, triaging core, trident, ligand, and the zinc iodide. Okay? The cavity size is not too large and not too small to accommodate common uh, the ordinary organic molecules. And uh, because the uh, interpenetrating so interdisting structures. This is very important because uh, uh, in the solid state, uh, the framework is very fresh. Namely, uh, when the big molecule is coming, then the cavity can be expanded. With small molecules, the cavity can shrink. And uh, if the deficient aromatic rings are very friendly, very sticky to common organic molecules. And uh, the Hydrogen uh, aromatic CH bond of the uh, uh, electron deficient pigeon rings in the solid state works uh, very efficient hydrogen bonding products. So mainly, there are many, many uh, binding sites hydrogen bonding donor and hydrogen bonding uh, acceptors in this crystal. So, the molecular recognition is very important. So, uh, when uh, okay, the gas is uh, swimming into the pores, the gas molecule try to find their most comfortable place. So at the same time, the host molecule, host framework is oriented uh, to capture the gas molecule at the best position. So, namely, the Again, like in enzyme, so induced speed molecular recognition works. And uh, after their gas absorption, we always observe the multiple weak interactions. So if the cavity is very rigid and there are no binding sites, so the gas absorption, absorption could occur, but gas molecules cannot be working. But the uh, induced speed molecular recognition works. So then molecules are not dissolved. They are oriented. Then uh, we can observe this molecule. And also there is another very important advantage of our method. So we can do the X-ray crystallographic analysis with only one tiny crystal of the uh, crystal sponge. Okay. Only one tiny crystal is enough. So, and uh, uh, actually we did the, uh, the analysis of the uh, sub-microgram quantity of target compound. Okay. One crystal is placed at the bottom of the microtube, which is dipped in a gas solution. Uh, containing the, uh, only the sub-microgram quantity of samples. But still, our crystalline sponge absorbed the gas molecule from the solution. And we could see the gas structure from uh, only 500 nanograms, so sub-microgram quantity of samples. We could clearly see the absorbed gas structure. We can uh, dramatically scale down the crystal graphic experiment, diffraction experiment. Then uh, after obtaining this structure, we calculated the volume of the absorbed gas molecules, and we realized that 500 nanograms is too much. So we asked, uh, I asked the students to try smaller scale. 
Then the he called the structure, then the track is more asking. And then we repeated this conversation. And uh, uh, yes, my colleague uh, easily analyzed the same compound from only 50 now. But still, we could get a very good extended. And uh, 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 also technically difficult, he also tried the only the 10 micrometer size crystal for the uh, uh, the crystal much crystal. Then uh, uh, he got a record. Record. Our record is only five, five nanometer. But uh, even from only five nanometer, we could create here yeah, absorbed guest structure. So nobody, probably nobody thought of the uh, such a trace amount X-ray crystal. Nobody believed that X-ray crystal is such a highly sensitive analytical method and uh, the method can analyze such a very, very trace amount of compounds. Why? Because, because we need more samples to make single crystal. So from only the nanogram quantity of samples, it's extremely hard to make a single crystal. So then uh, we need a yeah, substantial amount of the samples. But by removing the crystallization step, then the X-ray crystallography turned into an almost new analytical method that does not require the crystallization and uh, does not require the uh, large amount of samples. No, it's almost a new analysis method. Then now uh, we had an idea to combine the X-ray crystallography with uh, preparative gas chromatography separation or even analytical HPHC separation. So here, the uh, so preparement, preparement oil components were separated by preparative gas chromatography. All the compounds are liquid and volatile. So uh, it will soon disappear. However, uh, we could analyze all the components by X-ray crystal. Our perfume company was very surprised. So they, they bought a new X-ray machine for their company. <laughs> and uh, we worked with the beer company, so Japanese and the beer uh, key company. And uh, they analyzed, they succeeded in analyzing uh, around 20 uh, so beta taste component beers that uh, involved in the house. So you know, such studies have never been examined by uh, beer companies. So now uh, we know the major components of the beta taste of beers. Okay? So if so, so by checking just the profile of the beer taste, we can blend the taste of your favorite beers. We can start a beer company. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, by X-ray crystallography, we can determine the uh, absolute configuration, the right-handed or left-handed, we can distinguish by x -ray. Uh, by observing the anomalous scattering so derived from heavy atoms. So namely, normally we needed to incorporate heavy atoms by chemical modification. Then we need to start it. It's not an easy procedure. However, please remember that heavy atoms are already installed. Heavy atoms are already involved in the host frame. Uh, because uh, the, uh, the metal node, we uh, employed zinc iron. And by observing the uh, so normal scat uh, scattering from the heavy atoms involved in the host framework, then uh, we could easily determine the right hand or left hand. So, and uh, this is a very good news to synthetic people who are doing asymmetric synthesis studies. And uh, they sent us many, many curious chiral markings. 
So this molecule has the uh, axial chirality, that is, it's, it has the uh, planar chirality, plane chirality. They have uh, quaternary carbon centers, chiral centers. So all of them have, uh, there are no empirical rules for uh, determining the absolute configuration of these chiral molecules. Then uh, we analyze and uh, determine. And we are very happy to uh, publish many collaboration papers uh, with Genesis. I believe that this is the most reliable and the most uh, and the easiest method for determining the absolute configuration of chiral molecule. And uh, we received many many unknown natural products from natural product chemists. Particularly, the marine natural products. <laughs> then uh, 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 we were running at that time. We were running the national project, and uh, so there were two talented postdocs, and uh, so they received uh, many unknown natural products from uh, the natural product communities, and uh, only in one or two years. They analyzed over 70 natural products. So our group uh, was showing the uh, highest performance so in terms of the uh, structure determination of natural products, so including the absolute stereochemistry. We could easily determine the uh, 3D structure of the natural product. And uh, according to our experience, Roughly 5% of NMR structures are wrong. So we found the misassignment of stereochemistry in their NMR spectroscopic uh, structure illustration. It doesn't mean that 5% of natural products can be very poor. It doesn't mean. It simply means that this is a limitation. This is a limitation. 95% probability is almost a limitation of the spectroscopic illustration of 3D structure of complex molecules. We hope that in the future, the uh, spectroscopic study and the crystalline structure, the combination of these two methods would be a standard for determining the uh, structure, 3D structure of very complex natural products. So, currently we are further reducing the size of the sponge, crystalline sponge. So, and, uh, we are now using the, uh, so, uh, the new technique at the synchrotron facility, and we are also dealing by uh, uh, using micro electron diffraction. And the crystalline size can be uh, so 10 micrometers. Then, so with this size of crystal sponge, uh, so in theory, we can analyze even a felt the picogram quantity of sometimes. So you might be wonder, you might you might wonder if there are such a very very trace and important factors. Yes, yes. Just think of their metabolite analysis in a medical research. Then, uh, so you can detect by mass spectrometry from just a peak. So it's just a femto to picogram quantity. Now you can just uh, check by mass spectrometry. So then uh, uh, you can see this is a known compound or unknown So. But uh, if it's no unknown compound, now you have no way to go further. So if you get the very important compound from the uh, patient of the uh, cancer, for example, you cannot scale up the experiments. You cannot scale up. So uh, we are now collaborating with medical people to analyze their very key, key metabolic analysis. 
in a metabolic analysis study. Uh, the, uh, the asynchronous activity. So uh, the uh, micrometer size crystal can be scooped with a micro sized book. We, we cannot see the crystals anymore. But uh, in the first scan of the uh, X ray beam, uh, we can specify the positions. And uh, in the scan, second screening, uh, we will get the uh, diffraction data from many, many crystals. And uh, all the telecasts are merged. Uh, we are very surprised because uh, we could get much, much better quality x ray data. The soaking time, absorption time, is, becomes very, very short because the size is small. And the crystal can be easy. Uh, we can get the homogeneous uh, guest absorbed crystal. Anyway, so uh, we can get very good um, method for analyzing the even the attempt to pick up grand scale sun. Let's see. Uh, yes, this axis means the amount of the analyzed camera. And this uh, structure information. The uh, most sensitive device, most the most sensitive device we know is just a dog sense. So they can sense. Yeah. But they give us just yes or no one. Just one that they receive. Yeah. So with mass spectrometry, we can get the molecular And uh, by NMR. And uh, by NMR, so we can get the uh, even the absolute configuration. But we need milligram quantity of samples to make single crystals. In this region, there are no approaches, no methods to approach to others. No. Okay. In this reason, so we, we have to give up. No. Now, uh, for this region, our crystal instrument method just uh, extended the uh, scope. And uh, now we are trying to build this large plant so in this uh, so, uh, not only in uh, chemistry, but also uh, in biology and medical research, the sponge method has been uh, so showing the uh, power, its problems. And uh, not only in academic research, but also the uh, industries, industrial research uh, needs this technology. We believe that the uh, sponge method can change the game as long as molecules Okay, uh, let me also discuss on the assembly of very big structure. So, but this is very simple. We are just making the structure bigger and bigger. Number of components are larger and larger. In 2002, uh, four, we reported the self assembly of M12 L24 amorphous, <coughs> which I displayed by the uh, animation at the beginning of this talk. Its shape is roughly spherical, but uh, it has the symmetry of cube of the heat with 12 vertices and 24 sides. So, cube of the heat is one of the 13 Archimedean solids, which are uh, uh, so semi regular complex polyhedron. Uh, for here, composed of two or more types of regular components, uh, from triangle and square, or triangle and pentagon, like And uh, two of them have tetravalent structures, in which four edges meet at every node. We are using a square planar transition method, so tetravalent transition method. So, in principle, we can target these four particles <coughs> by surface. So, the final structure would like to be close to disappear to minimize their surface energy. So, and uh, we target four Archimedean solids and also one tri a tetravalent 
quadratic solution or regular polynomials, or in this case, octahedral. So uh, finally, we could figure out five possible sources. Only five, namely in the strength assembly, so there are magic numbers, and the only five n values are allowed for the ourselves. So uh, we realize that there is a mathematical constraint in this surface. Only five, then uh, we ambition, we ambition to synthesize all of them. And in fact, in 2010, we got uh, 2440 long term of And then in uh, 2016, we got uh, 3060 Aikoshido Dekai. Let me convince, convince you that the results by showing the X ray with some analysis structures. This is a research structure of M24 L48 long cubic hydro. So you can count 24 metal cycles, 48 bridging units. Although I, I have never counted. <laughs> so, and uh, then uh, uh, this is the crystal structure of M30 L60 microstructure here. So, and uh, uh, the size is close to 10 now, comparable to the uh, small to medium sized proteins. So, our uh, self assembly goes to protein size. So, this is molecular weight which is over 37,000. This is chemical formula. You know, <laughs> chemical formula. But still, this is not a polymer. So polymer has the uh, distribution in the size and uh, uh, formula and the uh, molecular weight. So distribution of the structure, the discourse structure means this has the properties. So we are aiming at the yeah, non dispersed properties, non, non dispersed structure. So, uh, we are very close to the nature structures. So. And uh, the most important uh, parameter that controls the final uh, structure is the bent angle of the reaching ligand. So, this angle. So, from a smaller bent angle, so the final structure applied to be small. From the larger angles, then the final structure will be bigger, bigger. So we know the result from the both lengths. So we wonder what happens in between. We synthesize several new ligands whose bend angle divide these two angles with almost the same interval. So we expected the uh, formation of a uh, mixture or uh, just a new structure at the expense of the, uh, the cement. Okay. Very surprising, the, the results were very impressive. Uh, we observed the uh, critical change in the structure. Namely, the, uh, we observed the sharp threshold existing of uh, 131 to 34 angles. So, well, we didn't see the formation of a mixture, always small or large. Again, we wonder why. And uh, we realized that even the uh, initial difference is very small, such a small difference will be amplified during the assembly from many, many components, many, many species. So, thanks to this amplification effect, uh, if the given condition slightly prefers the uh, smaller structures, then everybody come to a uh, small structure, to a small structure, or vice versa. Yeah, in other words, we are unable to make a mixture in the service. So back to this uh, roadmap. Okay. Uh, this axis uh, is a self-assembly parameter. And uh, we can make the analog change in the self-assembly parameters. There are no restrictions in the values. But the output is digital. So 
unified structures are allowed. And this analog digital relationship is particularly important to control the structure, the, to make the structure very stable. And I mean that at a certain range, at a certain range of self-assembly parameters, we can always reach the only one is structure. Because there are no other possibilities. Okay? And once this framework is formed, uh, it's very stable at a certain range of external stimuli. Oh. Selectivity is the most important issue in chemistry. Uh, we normally control the selectivity by static effects or by electronic effects. However, uh, the selective formation of this giant framework is controlled by mathematical restriction. We can say that this is the mathematical control of the structure of matter on the lab scale. Actually, the same principle uh, is employed in the formation of large spectral virus capsule structures. So they have the hypostatic uh, hydrochloric in all the COVID virus. I am, uh, so as the uh, symmetric. So because uh, they are using the such a geometric or mathematical restrictions to control the uh, structure of the bias uh, caption. So the nature is the great mathematician from the origin of the life. Origin. What happens uh, if we make the uh, further, so larger, slightly larger? So different, uh, then the uh, core ring was uh, so replaced with uh, the seleno. The difference is only the very small, but uh, such a difference, small difference, will be amplified. Actually, we obtained a huge structure, but the uh, NMR spectrum was already very broad because of the big size. And the mass spectrometry didn't show any right away. So, and uh, we tried the uh, crystallization. And finally, we got a single crystal. Then, uh, by observing the uh, X ray preliminary structure, we are very surprised. So, we had a totally unexpected situation. And what we observed was the unexpected L30 and L60 structure appear in our study. Uh, this is the uh, electron density observed at the early stage of the uh, crystal graphic analysis. You can see it's roughly spherical. Then you can see also see the square and the triangle, square and triangle. It's highly symmetric, roughly square. But this simple framework, topology, network topology, does not belong to the Archimedean solids. And the more surprisingly, we could not find this geometry in any textbook of geometry. So, what is this guy? We are very surprised, but very frustrated. We have molecule, we have substance, substance. we have x ray structure, but we cannot publish because <laughs> we cannot explain. So, a couple of months, we are very much frustrated. <coughs> Finally, uh, one of my colleagues, so Daishi, Daishi Fujita, is another Fujita. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, he is a very smart guy. He established uh, new mathematical discussion that clearly explain the uh, structure uh, of the uh, unexpected polyhedron. So we were uh, inspired by the uh, Goldberg polyhedron. Which is a complex polyhedron made from hexagons and pentagons. From all the hexagons, we can always get the infinite high We can never cross. It's impossible. But by incorporating pentagons, we can make the complex circles. Then the pentagon, pentagon. So by including 12 pentagons, then we can finally cross the structure. And the 
depending on the relative position of the two uh, adjacent pentagons, uh, we can define the many uh, the series of different gold bar polyhedra. So, uh, in this case, uh, this gold bar polyhedra can be uh, expressed as the uh, gold bar 3, 2, case of three step branches. So, this is gold bar 3, 2 polyhedra. So, each can be defined by the relative position of adjacent pentagons with two indexes, H and K. So the Fermin is one of the gold bar polyhedra. So from pentagon to pentagon, uh, you can move one step and one step. So this is gold bar one, one uh, topology. And uh, this file is captured as the gold bar one, two topology. So, and the uh, only gold bar polyhedra have the trivalent structure in which three edges meet at every one place. In a, a new discussion, we simply uh, extended the uh, gold bar polyhedra from trivalent to the uh, tetravalent so, the projects in which four edges meet at every one. Uh, uh, this is the Daish. Then uh, uh, Goldberg invented uh, the uh, conventional T to describe the uh, two indexes H and K with only one letter. So, so the summation, the square of the summation of the, these two vectors uh, can be uh, described as such. But this is a high school mathematics. Basically. So, uh, if you have the T number, uh, you can recalculate the digit H and K. Uh, H and K. And maybe uh, this is just a one better description of the two indexes. In our uh, uh, extended gold bar polyhedra, the basic network is a square grid sheet. Square, square, square. Again, we can never cross. But by including a triangle, triangle that we can make convex surface, and then finally we can this. Again, each uh, extended gold bar polyhedron can be uh, defined by the relative position of the two indexes. And uh, by analogy, we define the Q number by making the square of the two vectors. So in this case, uh, we can adopt the Pythagoras equation. This is junior high school mathematics. <laughs> and uh, based on the Pythagoras equation, uh, we could generate a series of magic numbers or Q numbers from a digit numbers each. So, and uh, each Q number represents one specific relationship of triangle and a triangle in the for example, uh, for Q number 2, H and K should be 1 and 1. So the relative position should be 1 step and 1 step. So 1 step and 1 step. So uh, it describes the uh, geometry of cube octahedron. The next possible Q number is 4. H and K should be 0 and 2. 0 step and 2 step. 0 step and 2 step. Representing the Long cube of the hill. And the next possible Q number is 5. H and K should be 1 and 2. 1 step and 2 step. 1 step and 2 step. And uh, this is the anthropology. This is a framework which we encounter by action. Now everything is clear. Everything is clear. So we discovered a new series of polyhedra, which we term the extended gold bar polyhedra. So which are convex polyhedra made from square and triangle. And uh, uh, so what we encountered was the Q number of five structures. When Q number is over five, 
So in print structures, this is very important. So then the square window cannot be perfect plane. plane. So one corner of the square is slightly deviated from their path. Strictly speaking, strictly speaking, it doesn't meet their definition of mathematicians, mathematicians' definition of polyhedron. Because it's not surrounded by plane. But uh, I don't care such a small division. <laughs> then now uh, we could find we find a yeah, new series of polyhedron. Uh, or we can say the course polyhedron. By accepting the small deviation of one corner from the perfect square in square square. Anyway, everything is clear. And uh, we could easily prepare this table. So, uh, from two numbers, uh, we can uh, easily count, uh, calculate the number of vertices, which is basically okay. And uh, very surprising, uh, if we believe that we are synthesizing a series of Archimedean solids, Archimedean solids but it is not true, uh, what we have synthesized was a series of extended gold numbers with a Q number of 1 to 5 without missing anybody. So, and they are uh, everything to create. So, uh, but more importantly, the, this mathematical uh, so discussion made us possible, made it possible to predict our future structures. So, namely from this table, uh, we realize that the next possible structure should be 48 and 54 and 60. So the uh, difference is very small. So we believe that we can make M48. Then uh, we became very serious, synthesizing many new ligands and examined many different uh, conditions for the self-assembly. And uh, finally, we got the uh, M48 L96. Extended Goldberg Hydra, which was predicted by our own mathematical discussion. Oh, this is a crystal structure. So, uh, should we, uh, it can be uh, described as a tetrad variant extended Goldberg Hydra, uh, 2 2 polyhedra with the Hydra, uh, with Q number. The weight is over 47,000. This is molecular. Still, uh, we we are within reach to the uh, construction of the biological structures uh, in nature. Okay, uh, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to include. <coughs> let, let me quickly show the uh, next couple of slides. So there again, we have important lesson. Mathematical rationalization can predict future structures. Well, this is a very important lesson from uh, our study on the uh, gold of the assembly of gold by the so Back to the metal peptide uh, chemistry, we incorporated proline, proline because uh, proline can form the term conformation. Expect, we expected the more high, uh, in, uh, entanglement of three dimensionally entangled structures. And uh, yes, uh, we got 3D dimensionally interlocked, very complex structure, consisting of four uh, independent metal peptide beam framework. So how can we describe this approach? We discussed with mathematicians, and uh, so they said, uh, Claim that this topology can be uh, described as a tetrahedral ring. Okay, the one, uh, four rings are placed on the four faces of a tetrahedral. And then uh, you can make the uh, double twisting on every edge of the tetrahedral. Then uh, you can get this topology. So, uh, that, uh, tetrahedral is the uh, 
one of their platonic solids, and the three of them have their trivalent structures. Again, we got the new road map. So, uh, three trivalent uh, platonic solid structures could be possible in the surface. So, and uh, in fact, uh, from this figure, we got the cubic link. Oh, this is the complex structure. Again, you can see one metal peptide ring and six metal peptide rings uh, interlocking with a cubic uh, symmetry. And uh, here, oh, it's a M60, L60 dodecahedron ring. So uh, it's almost a crazy idea, crazy target from scratch. So from scratch, nobody designed such a crazy target. But for us, so uh, it's mathematically predicted. The difference is only one parameter. By modulating only one parameter, so we could reach here. So for us, these two structures are almost equivalent. So then, uh, uh, so finally, we got this you know, 60 well, 60 structure. This is the moment the uh, champion. Uh, structure in terms of the number of components. So, and currently uh, we are uh, encapsulating proteins. I'm sorry for the time to discuss the detail of uh, protein chemistry, protein engineering. We can discuss it later. So, uh, the proteins, uh, the protein protein uh, aggregation is not allowed because uh, by the case. Now that makes uh, proteins very, very stable. So uh, under forcing conditions, the protein can be once degraded. Uh, I hope that you, you know the uh, HSKC and about. It's just a fingerprint of protein folding structure. It's once broken, but uh, when it's rebuffered, rebuffered to the original aqueous conditions, then the original structure will regenerate. So, uh, CLE is a protein which we used. So, the, uh, it was uh, refolded in a uh, cage. Uh, refolding of the protein by caging is uh, the important action of chaperone proteins. We could mimic the uh, chaperone function in our cell center proteins for our future vision here. Okay, let me summarize my talk. Uh, that this slide shows you the uh, scientific significance of our uh, studies over the last three decades. Uh, in the transition, our traditional disciplines, the yeah, organic people like to create new shapes, while in you know, other people, a new states. But uh, in our study, we created a new interdiscipline in which inorganic chemistry creates new shapes. Hope that it will be a new principle for creating the chemical frameworks on the nanoscale. It's our it's a dream. I cannot acknowledge all the people because uh, I work with the, uh, most of the research in the group. But uh, here are the uh, pictures of my former and current key co workers who used to be a staff assistant professor or associate professor. Oh, this is the kind of group that I also acknowledge the whole of my co workers. Here are kind of key uh, scientific staff, young people in my group. Okay, thank you for your time.